gut? Ja. Hello, America. <clears throat> Everything is going great in our country today. This is Sam I ate. It's the Halloween edition of what is normally the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGange is absolutely the worst reporter ever. So what we are doing is we are going to cover the news tonight exactly the way it needs to be covered, exactly the way the mainstream media always covers it. Above all else, you must believe everything that I say, because I would never lie to you. I am the picture of truth, and you can trust the words that I speak to you. I'd like to lead off today with some wonderful news. This is from a rather deplorable site, Infowars.com. FCC prepares fairness doctrine for the internet. It is high time that we had the fairness doctrine in this country. Don't you know, are you blind to the fact that there are more Republican and Libertarian talk show hosts than there are Democrats or Greens? It's true. There's even more than there are Reform Party members. That might be because the Reform Party isn't around anymore, but that's neither here nor there. I think what's important for you to realize here is the Democrats, they had their chance with Air America. For those of you that don't know, it was a radio station that got absolutely no ratings and got canceled, and it had a very strong liberal bias. Well, <clears throat> just because we didn't succeed certainly is not a reason for us not to have equal say. And just because America doesn't want to listen to us, as they proved by the failure of Air America, we know what is in your best interest. We do. And I'm going to read this to you, and you're going to be very, very happy. For those of you that might not know the Fairness Doctrine in, if you know your history, the Fairness Doctrine was a doctrine that allowed equal time. So if you gave 20 minutes to a Republican, you had to give 20 minutes to a Democrat. Now, of course, there are problems with this because the third parties don't get recognized. But see, that's not a problem. It's only a problem if you listen to that idiot on the correct views. It's not a problem because we know what we're doing. We have everything under control. And just because we tend to give CBS, NBC, NBC a very strong left-leaning already, we need more say. Because we as a fascistic, excuse me, we as a... Um, uh, a uh, republic, of course, cannot exist without these sorts of things. The Federal Communications Commission will facilitate the government's prospective Sovietization of private sector media with its multi-market study of critical information needs, a survey planned for a field test rollout in 2014, according to a story posted in the Daily Caller today. The FCC will collect remarkably wide range of information on demographics, point of view, news topic selection, management style, and other factors in news organization, both in and out of the FCC's traditional purview, writes Tim Cavanaugh. The airwaves regulator would also subject news producers and all media to invasive questioning about their work and content, a first move on a collision course, it says, with the First Amendment. The First Amendment applies to those who have something to say that supports the government. It is not for those who wish in any way, shape, or form to be against the government. That is one thing that needs to be understood. Another thing that needs to be understood is you can't have journalists like Edward Snowden exposing what is going on. Because fascist democracies do not work that way. <clears throat> In this study, the FCC will delve into the editorial discretion of newspapers, websites, radio and TV station, Hudson Institute fellow Robert McDowell, who served as an FCC commissioner from 09 to 13, told the Daily Caller. And let's not forget, it's not just uh, Democrats that are, are in favor of this. You know, the FCC used to be run by uh, the, the son of Colin Powell, which of course was a, uh, a Tea Party member. This starts sticking the government's nose into what has traditionally been privileged and protected ground, regardless of one's political stripes, one should be concerned. Well, I don't think there's a lot of concern here. That I don't understand the point of the article. 
It seems to me that the government should have every right to go through every journalist's period and comma. These are great questions. Listen to this. Corporate general managers, news directors, editors, etc. Um, this is on page 25 of the study prepared by, prepared by the Social Solutions International. They are wonderful people. Believe everything that they say. What is the news philosophy of the station? It asks. Who else is in your market provides news? Who are your main competitors? <coughs> How much news does your station or stations air every day? Is the news produced in-house or is it provided by an outside source? Do you employ news people? How many reporters and editors do you employ? Do you have any reporters or editors assigned to topic beats? If so, how many and what are the beats? This is very important. You won't have people blowing whistles when this kind of thing happens. And that is exactly what we need to make our society more safe. Do you have any reporters or, I'm sorry, who decides which stories are covered? How much influence do reporters and anchors have in deciding which stories to cover? How much does the community input influence news coverage decisions? These are important questions. These can't be left up to newsroom hacks. This needs to be overseen by the federal government. How much do you define critical information that the community needs? How much does community input influence news coverage decisions? That's very important. You can't have Republicans and Libertarians having a voice in politics. They are terrorists. How do you ensure the community gets this critical information? These are all things that I, I'm sure all of you can see that we clearly need to be asking. Um, we do have some more, um, some more for everyone here. Now, see, the trouble is, Sam I.B.'s weak little studio, I'm so used to the, uh, the chairs where all of this is done for you, but I guess for Halloween I can slum it on a show like The Correct Views. I'm so ashamed of myself. I guess I'm probably going to be on the Media Speaks, too, an abysmal station. Terrorists, every one of them. BPA finally banned. There are so many conspiracy theorists out there that believe that BPA was leading to uh, diseases, leading to illnesses, and uh, even creating uh, homosexuality. Now we all know that the only people that are gay are people that are born gay. Nobody is ever made gay by the way they're treated or the chemicals that we put in their food. Nope. All gay people are created exactly the same way. Of course, if I was to say this about any other persuasion, I would be considered a racist. That is the way that liberalism works. This is terrible because this perfectly safe product, and people believe this because studies proved it, but these studies, you, you didn't hear about it on NBC or ABC, because these studies don't matter. Trust everything that I say. Now that almost every baby bottle manufacturer in the country has already voluntarily stopped using toxic bisphenol A, it is a product's formation. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, who Ron Paul wanted to foolishly get rid of, listen what a good job they do, get rid of them. The FDA has finally gotten the round to issuing a formal ban on the chemical for baby bottles in children's drinking cups. But this ban means very little, as many manufacturers have already begun substituting bisphenol S, BPS, a potentially more deadly plastics chemical, in many BPA-free products, including children's products. Uh, Natural News is another one of those sites uh, that I'm getting this from, where I'm very happy to be in here doing Sam IB's job correctly for him for a change. Because not only was BPA not bad for you, BPA was good for you. The things it did, the estrogen mimickers that are in it, those are healthy. And to assault the plastics industry that way is a disgrace. Why, do you know that the plastic industry funds mainstream media? They pay my check. How could you say that they were bad? 
Well, now they're worried about BPS, which has already been proven safe. Prompted by widespread consumer outrage over BPA's use in children's products despite its proven toxicity, the FDA reluctantly issued its basically useless ban, claiming that the decision simply codifies what the industry was already doing based on the preference of customers, to borrow the words of New York Times writer Sabrina Tavenworth. The FDA, in other words, is trying to assert its relevance into the matter after the fact, even though the people have already made the decision with their wallets. That's because the people have been misinformed by Sam I.B. in the media speaks. Places like Prison Planet, to a much lesser degree Fox News. Everyone knows that Fox News is evil. And everyone knows that Alex Jones is a conspiracy theorist. And everyone knows that David Icke doesn't have any good points at all. Focus only on the reptilian stuff. Don't focus on anything else that the man says. Humorously, the FDA, while issuing its ban, made a point of reiterating its position that BPA is still safe, which it is, and that the ban has nothing to do with BPA safety. It doesn't. FDA Deputy Commissioner Michael Taylor, who is a hero, he used to work for Monsanto. He's a Monsanto lawyer turned, vi lawyer turned vice president of public relations. And even he said publicly that his agency continues to support BPA's safe use. And it is safe any way that they want to use it. This matter, the agency stated in 2010 that it had concerns about the effects of BPA on brain behavior and prostate glands or fetuses, infants, and children. Fortunately, the FDA's uh, dubious position on BPA reaffirms that the agency has no clue what it is talking about, and this is the kind of thing you'll find on InfoWars, and does not take actual science seriously. The FDA, it accuses, has long been in bed with the chemical industry and its refusal to admit BPA is toxic, especially to children and it will eventually become the agency's demise. No, what will happen is you will realize that those chemical companies also fund the mainstream media, where you can get great news, such as what I'm giving you. Things that would, would put a smile on Stal Obama's face if he were to hear it. It says here, which is entirely untrue, that BPS is more dangerous than BPA. Neither one are dangerous. Believe everything that I say. Even a bigger issue, it claims, than BPA is its replacement, BPS, a chemical that was found in a recent study to have a significantly higher uptake in skin compared to BPA. Published in the journal Environmental Science and Technology, which is a scam, scam publication, the first ever study on BPS toxicity verified not only that the chemical is widely used, even in BPA-free products, but that it is also significantly more toxic because of its incredible absorption rate, and it gives you a link to a natural news article that you shouldn't go to. Few people are aware of the existence of BPS because nobody is really talking about it, because it is harmless. Just like with BPA, the safety of BPS was never properly tested prior to its quiet introduction and use in consumer products which is hardly surprising since most of the chemicals used in consumer products today were never properly safety tested. We, we don't need to test them. We know that they're safe if they are making us money. And if they are funding quality news organizations, then we need to continue using the products and not question whether or not they're good for us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this archaic setup that uh, Sam has loaned me here. I'll never fill in for him again. Melting starfish along west coast prompts Fukushima fears. Michael Thalen, uh, another ridiculous website, prisonplanet.com. Scientists are attempting to find out why one species of starfish is literally melting in the waters off of Washington State and Canada. Concerned about nothing. Biologists in Seattle took to pungent sound waters last weekend to collect sick and healthy sunflower starfish for testing. Several labs, including one at Carl University, will examine and compare starfish samples with Canadian specimens already being analyzed. Much ado about nothing. 
Oh, we've got some star sea stars that look like they're melting on the bottom, the Seattle Aquarium biologist Jeff Christensen said. Whether the cause is environmental or disease-related is currently unknown, but the number of melting starfish increases drastically with each passing day. At this time, we don't have a good idea what's causing it, so we're going to look for everything, Christensen said. There are a lot of melting sea stars out there, more than even a couple of days ago. What you need to understand is diseases pop up all the time. This could not be related to anything anything that's not reported on the major alphabet stations. Go to abc.com. They're not going to be talking about this. And I shouldn't be either. But it's Halloween, and the Supreme Leader has sent me. According to veterinarian Lasana Lahner, the starfish species condition is rapidly deteriorating, with more than half displaying the same disturbing symptoms. It's concerning to hear in a short time period we're seeing 60% of the species diseased in this area, Lahner said. My professional opinion as a mainstream media elitist, as someone that knows what's going on, this is, this is from global warming. This is clearly from global warming. Strangely, the symptoms have only been seen in certain areas of Washington's pungent sound in Canadian waters. While the verdict is still unknown, many are pointing fingers to Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant, which has continued to leak over 300 tons of highly radioactive water into the ocean every day. This small nuclear accident at Fukushima, they're trying to imply that the way the water circulates throughout the globe, in that part of the globe, that the reason pungent sound in places like that are the only ones affected is because that's where the ocean currents would take the radiation to. And they're trying to say that it's rather strange that starfish are dying only in those areas of an unknown disease. Radiation oftentimes sinks to the bottom of the ocean, and since starfish live on rocks in the bottom of the ocean, I could see how those that don't listen to the mainstream media could think, in fact, that it was Fukushima, since it's only happening where that water, radioactive water is going. 300 tons of highly radioactive water is nothing to be concerned about. If you smile at the radiation, the radiation will not hurt you. See, there is radiation coming off of my computer. Now, if I were to frown, well, I don't know. But, and it's not hurting me. If you don't believe me, look up Smile at the Radiation. It is a real story. As reported by investigative journalist Michael Snyder, massive evidence of Fukushima effect on the West Coast continues to be evident despite the silence from most Western media. Well, there should be a silence, because there's nothing going on here. This is, a, this is simple global warming killing the starfish, and if you turn your heat off and wear a sweater like I am, then you too can stop and you will save the starfishes. Earlier this month, Canadian authorities found massively high radiation levels in sea bass, with one showing 1,000 becquerels per kilogram of cesium. Cesium is harmless. Plankton tested from Hawaii to the west coast have been found to have high levels of cesium-137, with scientists in California finding the same isotopes present in 15 out of 15 blue tuna, bluefin tuna tested. Well, I mean, 15 out of 15, if they would have tested 100 more, there wouldn't have been any more radiation. There wouldn't have been. Eat fish. Fish is good for you. Even in light of one Canadian study that found cesium-137 present in 100% of the carp, seaweed, shark, and monkfish <clears throat> sold to the Canadian public, Western governments have continued to import Japanese seafood. And they should, because cesium isn't a problem. I know that nuclear bombs explode and cancer rates near nuclear accidents and nuclear explosions of any kind have gone up. And I know that the entire cast of the last uh, John Wayne movie died of cancer. 
while filming the movie near a bomb site. But we have evolved as a species. And if, if nuclear fuel, even though it melts down, if nuclear fuel will stop global warming, well then some people will die. But the starfishes will be okay. And don't forget, of course, that we need to keep a handful of people on Earth to make sure that the nuclear reactors continue to not hurt the environment, because we're using them to save the environment. As radiation levels rise, it is likely that the EPA will continue to raise acceptable levels of radiation in the food supply, concealing the increasing danger of radiation exposure. That's because they're heroes. This is wonderful news. You should be happy to hear this. Um, the EPA is a wonderful, wonderful organization, a wonderful um, agency. They would never, ever raise the limit of what's allowed in food just so that they can make an extra dollar and the economy can stay afloat. They would never do that. And I can say that because a lot of those food suppliers, they fund me at the mainstream media. With experts predicting a grim outlook, the best options available are informing others while protecting one's thyroid health from increased radiation exposure, which, which you can do with uh, nascent iodine. But I wouldn't worry about it because it's of no consequence. You're perfectly safe. Um, oh, this is a joke. This is a joke. Um, the Media Speaks, which is the most irresponsible website ever. I'm only doing this for Halloween and as a favor to the Supreme Leader. If you don't know who the Supreme Leader is, please go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. You'll see him. The only one with any sense on that channel. Friends, if you'd like, to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Bud K, I guess that's uh, the, the way to help the media speaks is to click on Bud K by going to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Now when you do that, you're going to be supporting the hacks at the media speaks. You're going to be helping them bring you news that is an absolute lie because it is not funded by big dollar. Believe everything that I say. If you're one of the peons that don't have a job, you're one of the peons that blame outsourcing for your condition, then you'll be happy to know that for $3.99 you can get a pocket survivor wire saw. If you cut down trees that way and not use gas or electric, you can help save the starfish. The uh, black serrated ink pen knife, $3.98, get that for someone and if they like it, call the Department of Security, Homeland Security because they're probably a terrorist. The three LED Dynamo hand crank flashlight, $2.99, $2.99. You don't have to buy batteries, and you can clean the starfishes. You can save them. All right, I've got um, a few more stories that I would like to attend to, if I could, uh, real quick. Look at this. Look at this blatant racism. The owners have forced that man to wear a racist outfit. Bob Costas, Redskins is an insult and a slur. Bob Costas is a hero. He's right about guns and he is right about this. Never mind the fact that the wonderful, detestable Adolf Hitler took weapons away before the fascists marched through the streets and started slaughtering people. Never mind that Stalin and Mao and even ancient Rome has done the same things. It's different this time. Things like that could never happen in America. Believe everything that I say. How did we ever go without NBC sportscaster Bob Costas to tell us we're racist bigots and we should hate ourselves, right, to Adam Salazar? <clears throat> NBC is always right. What you need to do is quit caring about these things and watch more football. The seasoned teleprompter reader 
which is a terrible slander for such a good man as Costas, took time during last night's NFL matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and Washington Redskins to lecture America on why the national capital team's name is an immensely offensive insult that needs revision. Taking a cue from President Obama, who last week said he would consider changing the team's name if he owned it, Costas pursued a line of contradictory logic to illustrate how football fans need to understand they're all insensitive racists who enjoy using insensitive racist slurs. What a man. Kinda makes me a little warped. Acknowledging that objections to names like Braves, Chief, Warriors, and the like represent political correctness run amok, Costas goes on to admit these teams' names actually honor rather than demean, similar to Vikings, Cowboys, or Patriots. So you can be born a Redskin and a Cowboy and a Patriot. Bob Costas is wise. But according to Costas, the Redskins are a different matter. Listen to this wisdom. Think for a moment about the term Redskins and how it truly differs from all the others. Ask yourself what the equivalent would be if directed towards African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, or members of any other ethnic group. When considered that, Redskins can't possibly honor a heritage or a normal character trait, nor could it possibly can be considered a neutral term. It's an insult, it's a slur. No matter how benign the present-day intent, it's fair to say that so long, for a long time now, and certainly in 2013, no offense, has been intended, but if you take a step back, it isn't, isn't it clear how offensive it might legitimately, might legitimately be? That's, that's, that's really interesting. Um, it goes on to say that perhaps the offensive part of the name is actually the Washington part and not the Redskin. Sacrilege, sacrilege, how could they say such a thing? Well, let, me, let me find the exact quote here. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm too broken up to read. You'll have to, um, you'll have to take my word for it. And another garbage uh, from InfoWars. Fed holds seniors at gunpoint during National Park shutdown, as they should. As they rightfully should. They're... There needs to be an understanding in this country that our rights are in fact bestowed by the government. And when, when you have these sorts of things happen, like gunfire, gunfire somewhere, then what you need to do is take as many rights away as you have to in order to apprehend the bad guy. And of course in California, some innocents were shot. But collateral damage is to be expected in a, fa in a democracy. Feds use Gestapo tactics <clears throat> to treat senior citizens like terrorists during the shutdown of Yellowstone National Park, placing them under armed guard in a locked hotel as panicked tourists thought they had been arrested vowing never to return to America. This is wonderful news. The Gestapo, <clears throat> they, they've earned respect. Pat Ballancourt was part of a tourist group of senior citizens visiting Japan, Australia, Canada, and the United States, who were in Yellowstone National Park when the government shutdown was announced last week. <clears throat> this was dated October 8th. When the party briefly exited their tour bus to take photos of a herd of bison, they were aggressively ordered by armed National Park Service Rangers to get back in the vehicle on the grounds that they were involved in recreation and that this wasn't permitted during the shutdown. Obama gave strict instructions to make this shutdown as hard on the American people as he could because he wanted you to see the light. He wanted you to know the truth. The group had booked to stay at a hotel within the park, which soon turned into a prison as the visitors were told to remain in the building until they stay expired, despite the fact that the tour guide had already paid a $300 parking fee. Well, they owed that. 
And they owe that to the government, because if the government asks for it, the government deserves it. We've become a country of fear, guns in control, Alan Court told the Eagle Tribune, adding they looked like Hulk Hogan's armed. They told us not, you can't go outside. Good. The tourists were placed under armed guard and locked inside the hotel as NPS rangers stood outside the doors. Asian tourists visiting from more authoritarian countries thought that they had been placed under arrest. <clears throat> Some of the Asians who were on tour said, Oh my God, we are under arrest. They felt like they were criminals, said Valancourt. I do wish they wouldn't swear by mentioning God. When the tour bus was leaving the park, it was also prevented from stopping at a full-service restroom on the way out, which had been threatened with having its license revoked if it allowed the bus to stop there. Well, of course. Do you know, without the federal government, who could be trusted in an outhouse? Valancourt said her father, who had spent three years as a Japanese prisoner of war camp, always said to stand up for what you believe in, and don't let them push you around but that she was now embarrassed, angry, and heartbroken for her country as a result of the experience. If she would simply go to a re-education camp, all of this would be clear to her, and a lot could be accomplished. The last story of the night is some wonderful news. This deals with the way our government is wisely and caringly raising your children. It takes a village to raise a children, Hillary Clinton said. And she was right. Because when Mrs. Clinton said that, she meant communistic villages to raise the children to support the government. Do me a favor. Do not look into what the Hitler Youth was. Do not look into what they believed. It's lies. Feds order school to ban packed lunches without doctors. No, thank God. <clears throat> Paul Joseph Watson. A school in Richmond, Virginia, is following federal government instructions by telling parents that they need to have a doctor's note in order to have their children be allowed to bring packed lunches to school. Another example of how many of the nanny state is encroaching via the public educational system. Now, it is important to know that vaccines are oftentimes seen as a eugenics tool. Now, they're not. But what's important to realize is that there are too many people in the world. Bisphenol A will keep you healthy. It will not end your life sooner or make you sicker to make you dependent on the government for money to pay your medical bills. It is there for your safety. A featured letter on the website of mom.com instructs parents to pack lunches must be accompanied by a physician's note, and it should. Dear parents, I have received word from the federal program's preschool, which is always right, pertaining to lunches from home. Parents are to be informed that students can only bring lunches from home if there is a medical condition requiring a specific diet along with the physician's note to that regard. <clears throat> that is because we cannot have unhealthy foods and candies given to the children of America. That is not up to their parents. And we will dictate which GMOs they get, because GMOs, genetically modified organisms, are the healthiest of foods. I am sorry for any inconvenience. If you have any questions concerning the matter, please contact Stephanie, the health coordinator for the Federal Program School Thanks. This is wonderful news. This is truly wonderful news. The letter also includes a handwritten note from the teacher which reads, <clears throat> Miss Brooks, please do not send a lunch to school unless a doctor's note is sent in connection with this letter. The identity of the school remains unknown, but it is situated in Richmond, Virginia, and they are doing wonderful things. So I suppose it's sending a note that says I choose to skip GMOs and lunches. You serve for a more balanced and safe diet as my parent of my child doesn't suffice, Trisha Haas wrote. What she doesn't understand is she's not part of the village that is needed to raise her child.
friends, you are listening to the uh, the correct views. This is Sam I8, proud member of the mainstream media. Don't go to themediaspeaks.com and do not date any do not give any money donation wise to the correct views of hotmail.com. I want to tell everybody sig hi uh, uh, goodbye. And I'd like to say that it has been an abysmal experience working here. Yes. Um, Sam I... Don't untie... Do not untie him yet. Sam I.B. DeGange wanted me to inform everyone that this was what he thought was satirical. And that no offense was meant to Jews. Or anyone. Well, how could any offense come from anybody from the mainstream media? And that's where I'm from. Good night, friends. That's a scoot. Yeah.